I guess what I have to mainly get straight is what uh, went on from the mid '80s on. Uh, basically, right <laughs> in 25 words or less. One well, thing, what have I been doing? Yeah, I mean, I can remember like after you know, the, the police never really uh, uh, released a, uh, a statement saying that you've officially disbanded. Just sort of wow. faded into the mist. Yeah, well, it was basically. Um, Bullshit. I mean, I mean, we definitely finished in '84, February '84. I mean, never. Well, we did do some more stuff after that. We got together and, and did a bit of recording for the Greatest Hits album, and we also did an Amnesty tour. But I mean, basically, we finished the, the last tour, and it was the end of February '1984, and that was it. You know. Uh, but you know, we were told, basically by management, not to say that we'd broken up for ulterior reasons, which were completely wrong. I think. Well, that you know. I think the management had, you know, vested interest to say that we weren't, uh, you know, finished. But mm -hmm. the truth was, it we that was sort of the end of the group. Mm -hmm. So, but it was very unsatisfactory because uh, people didn't know whether we were finished or not. Or I mean, it's never been cleared up. Yeah, it's very it's never been cleared up, which has always left you know the question open. You know, to uh, which. I suppose maybe there's an upside to that. Maybe one day we will come back and do something. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it was very irritating that we never did. Um, if we were going to break up, did a sort of a proper, mm -hmm. you know, closed it off on. You know, you know. I mean, you should do that sort of thing in life because it's, it's much more satisfactory. There should be a proper ending to things, yeah. and this was never ended like yeah. the farewell tour. Mm -hmm. So it's always been uh, something that needs to be closed. Yeah. It, it maybe one day it will. I think there's. I sort of feel there's more possibility of that now than there used to be. It's kind of a strange situation because it's like, uh, since, since there was no formal declaration, it's like Andy comes out with a record, ah, oh, he must have snuck it in before that next recording session. Sting comes out with <laughs> another record, ah, oh, yeah. he must have snuck it in there just before that night for the recording session, yeah. Stuart does a movie, ha, yeah. must have found yeah. time before that big recording session. Yeah, yeah. Well, and so it goes on. But yeah, it's a, it's a strange situation. You, you went off and did a record with Robert Fripp after what? that, right? Um, it was I did this or... maybe in '84. Actually. actually, I think the spring of '84, I did another one, the second one. Mm -hmm. We did two. Mm -hmm. One earlier on in '81, right. and then I think That's another right. in '84, something like that. Yeah, there were two. Incredibly complex music. Well, yeah. Well, it was instrumental music. It was more yeah. complex than you know than the stuff I was doing in the Police. But uh -huh. you know, it's just different. You know. Um, that was a while ago now. In retrospect, how do you evaluate it? Well, those records, I think they were very good, and I think, you know, they, they were quite popular, actually. But a lot of people still ask me about that, and sort of like the police, they ask, always, I always get asked if I'm going to do another record with Robert Fripp, to the point where I almost think we should. See, we never went out and toured with that stuff, and I think we could have actually done very well. But, you know, I, now, you know, the point of this interview is that I'm making my own records, mm -hmm. which is really what I'm into now, mm -hmm. you know, I'm here with this band, finally I always wanted to come back to Japan and uh, because uh, it's a very good country to come and play instrumental music <coughs> I think, and uh, it's nice to get here in one form or another, I mean we're playing in Blues Alley which is a small venue but it, it gives uh, people a chance to see the band, and, you know, I'm, I'm making these records now and I'm very happy doing it and I, it took me a while to kind of, you know, after the police and all that to kind of get sort of refocused, you know, I moved around a lot, like anyone would be after an experience like that, it takes time to, you know, sort out what you want to do exactly, and I tried a couple of things, but I finally, you know, I moved from England to LA, got back into the scene, and started really playing again, probably about, you know, a year and a half, two years ago, mm -hmm. there was a while there where I, you know, sort of lost a lot of things in a way, but I finally got it back together, and I finally got a great band again, and started to make good records and uh, yeah I feel good about it now that I got my feet on the ground you know in a, in a musical sense and I'm sort of moving it forward you had drifted away from music for a couple of years now? well yeah I think there was just a period of uh, not being qu quite sure what I wanted to do but make I was gonna make my own records of film scores where I wanted to live it was sort of a period of adjusting to normal life again you know, sort of thing but I feel good now, you know, I've, you know, I've got everything together, mm -hmm. families together, houses together, you know, it's all sort of come back together, you know, like, 
in a good way. You uh, know? Everything feels very solid. It does now, yeah, but it took a while for me to sort of get back to that point, get refocused. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you had been in like a state of disarray for... for yeah, well, you know, I mean, even enjoying the police, I mean, ironically, you know, I feel like, you know, the police was a great uh, band and everything, but it was an amazing sort of five or six years of non-stop, you know, craziness, and uh, in a way I sort of it was hard to even stay focused as a player, as a musician, throughout something as intense as that. You know, I mean, basically we did what we did and we kept going. But I, in a way, time stood still. And, uh, you know, I think I sort of lost my focus a bit, ironically, as I say, during that police period. And I, since then, I've kind of gone back on course to where I was before, before that period, you know, as a player, you know, being more involved in the, you know, really creative playing and writing. Now I feel I'm back into it, and I'm enjoying it again. Hearing the record, uh, it almost sort of took me back, like, you know, ten years. Saying, hey, this is fusion, and nobody plays, this, nobody plays fusion anymore. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, you're always stuck with uh, having to give it a name. It, right. you, I mean, I, it's, it's pathetic, really, because mm -hmm. it's, it's like neo-fusion, or tra <laughs> trans-fusion, I call it. <laughs> I don't think it's, it's not like old jazz rock from the 70s. It's much yeah. more... Uh, subtle and more mm -hmm. sophisticated than that, you know, the much more seamless, you know, jazz rock was something that to me really never worked. This isn't exactly jazz in quotes, and it's not rock either, it's just a very contemporary, uh, you know, music that draws on a lot of different things. I think it's shaded in a jazz sense, harmonically, in the kind of melodies and rhythms we set up, but uh, it draws on a lot of things. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's fair to call it fusion, but you shouldn't like think of it as fu like the old, early yeah. sort of Mahavishnu kind of fusion. Right. It's just something else. It's not like you know a banquet of chops or skills that kind of thing. It's more of adding atmospheric. No, it's, it's more, more about mood. evoking mood, mm -hmm. and uh, it's about the composition as as much as you know just all out and out you know blowing. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it seems like several songs almost sound like they can be uh, uh, grafted onto a, a film. You know, mm -hmm. you, hear the, you hear the opening. The scene is cartoon, 1920. <laughs> yeah, well, fair enough, yeah. I mean, it seems to be the way I write. A lot of people have mentioned that. I mean, I have scored films, but that that happens to sort of come as a secondary to my sensibility, not the other way around. Like, I scored films and started writing film music and everything I do. It was, it was even if you listen to those records with Robert Fripp, that it seems to be the way I mm. hear it, mm. sort of, almost visually. Yeah. Some people are very cinematic in their style. It, it, it is. It's very natural. I don't know why. It just mm. comes out that way. Um, you know, rather than... I So far, I haven't made records which are just um, a vehicle for solos. You know, and you know that you play the head and then you're off and you're just, like, blowing. Mm -hmm, so right, right. It, it's more, you know, I, I like to, uh, you know, evoke place and time and make, a, you know, structured compositions with improvisational areas. Uh, did you see the show? Yeah. I'm going to see it right tonight. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's a shame. It's because, you know, you'll see we take these tunes and we open them right up. Right. I, we do open them up, you know, in terms of... Oh, you know, we, yeah, in other words, yeah. we play the yeah. same tunes, uh -huh. but, you know, we, we improvise right, right, much right. more mm -hmm. because we're playing live, right. you know. I mean, there is much more free improvisation. And I think I'm sort of starting to do that. More now as I, I go, I make a record, you know, and I've gotten into this pattern in the last two years where I've actually been able to go out and play where, you know, you make a record, then you go out and you try and play it, you know, and I'm beginning to, um, I think, understand more about what I want to do there because, I mean, if you are performing and going out and playing what you've made on a record, it's important when you make the record to uh, consider the fact that you're going you're to have to play it. And, and to sort of, in a way, make sure that the record is something that you can really play very well live and not make something on record that, you know. So I'm starting to think about that more now when I compose for the, the actual recording that I can really, like, take it and play with it very well live. So I think that's starting to dovetail more for me, too. Mm -hmm. Because that's the reality of my life, I make the records I go out and play. Mm -hmm. Before, it was, you know, Mysterious Barricades record, it was... I did actually go out and play it, but it was very difficult. And I played it as a solo. I went out and played alone, you know, with uh, digital loops and stuff. And then the Golden Wire we played, but we needed a six-piece band to pull that off. And this record, and you know, there's the four of us, and, and we we really do it pretty well. How did this project come together? 
Uh, well, I mean, you know.